In my most recent video, I talked about the subfamily of Perissodactyla known as Calicotheranae, which is a group that comprises of approximately 50% of the family Calicotheridae. This group was a very wide-ranging subfamily, living all across Afro-Eurasia and surviving from 23 million to only 781,000 years ago. But I've already talked about this subfamily. In this video, we'll be looking at the older of the two subfamilies, known as Schizotheranae, which lived from the late Eocene Epoch to the early Pleistocene. There are a few differences between the two subfamilies. For example, Schizotheranae has claws on its hind feet, along with the forelimbs, while Calicotheranae only has its members' front feet having claws. This group just in general looked like other perissodactyls like horses, tapirs, and rhinos, having a longer neck, proportionally longer hind legs, a different shaped skull, and just generally they look like totally different animals. In the fossil record, the very earliest genus within the subfamily Schizotheranae was the genus Borisiacia. Borisiacia lived around 37 to about 30 million years ago in what is today Kazakhstan in Central Asia. It would have looked way more like a horse than your typical calicothere, even be around the same size. From Borisiakia in Central Asia, the subfamily Schizotheranae then diversified further into the following genre. The family's namesake, Schizotherium, is very fragmentary, known from only isolated remains scattered across Eurasia. A better known relative of Schizotherium was Metaschizotherium, containing three species, being found almost exclusively in Europe. Unlike the later members of Calicotheranae, Metaschizotherium was most common in typically forested areas, where it would have fed on soft vegetation. One of the main focuses of this video will be the genus Moropus, and I have quite a bit to say about this genus. This genus shares many convergences with Calicotheranae, including the posture, claws on only the front feet, and it would have shared many convergent features with a lot of other animals. It likely shared similarities with bears, primates, ground sloths, therizinosaurs, dinochirus, and of course, later Calicotheres. The genus was also one of the largest Calicotheres reaching a maximum shoulder height of around 2.4 metres or 8 feet tall, making it taller than the vast majority of humans, and about the same size as Gigantopithecus rearing up on its hind legs. All of the four species within the genus Moropus were exclusively found in North America, being one of the very few genera of Calicotheres, if not the only genre, to migrate into North America and the New World in general, via the Bering Strait. A very likely contemporary of Moropus was the very strange genus Tylocephalonyx. Tylocephalonyx's skull would have likely closely resembled the Calcotherine Calamantia. Tylocephalonyx likely used its skull in a similar way to Pachycephalosaurs and Calamansa, using it for headbutting other males. Or at least, I assume, other males, because I don't see why females would use such structures. Although, it's likely that both sexes attained these structures. Moving back to the Old World, and specifically in Africa, was the genus Chemosichia. Chemosichia was likely a browser, using its claws in a very hook-like manner to drag branches closer to its mouth for consumption. I'm only going to give this genus a very brief mention as it's possibly synonymous with Ancylotherium and Metaschizotherium, not being very distinct from either genre. The final Calicothere I have not talked about from either subfamily is Ancylotherium, meaning hooked beast in Greek. Like the similar North American genus Moropus, it is very well studied, being known from both Eurasia and Africa. And Sylotherium has been found in Afghanistan, Greece, Serbia, Turkey, Tanzania, South Africa, Ethiopia, and Kenya. So it was very wide-ranging. And Sylotherium was ever so slightly shorter than Moropus at 2 metres or 6 feet 6 inches tall at the shoulder and weighing 450 kilograms or 990 pounds. Between the late to mid Pleistocene epoch, with the extinction of Ancylotherium, came the end of Schizotheranae. 
though Calicotherinae would survive for more than a million years longer. The overall family of Calicotheridae was amazing, surviving for nearly 40 million years, inhabiting almost every continent except for South America, Oceania, and Antarctica. I'm thinking of either going back to cryptid profiles or paleo profiles, or prehistoric relics. Though, I'll let you guys decide in the community tab of my channel. I'll see you all next time. Bye.